everyone. I am so happy to be with you today. My name is Melissa Taylor, and I'm on the team with Online Bible Studies here at Proverbs 31 Ministries, and we are just over-the-top excited getting started on this new online Bible study, Mom Set Free by Jeannie Cunyon. And every week, we're going to be coming to you, and Jeannie is here with us today. So, hey, Jeannie, how you doing? Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> yes, I'm here with the author of Mom Set Free, and y'all, each week, she's going to be joining us and offering us some encouragement. And so, just think for all the reasons that you might have signed up for this study, um, just wanting to do your very best at being a mom, but feeling so much pressure to get it right. And um, it's just, we don't have to live like that. And so we're going to learn about so much freedom that we can get and how from Jeannie as we go through this study. And so let me tell you a little bit about Jeannie. Um, I've had an opportunity to get to know her some over the last few weeks. And you guys, she is so delightful. And you're going to walk away after this Bible study and just say, hey, I, I think I have a new friend. Her name's Jeannie Cunyon, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what she's like as she leads you through this study. Um, you'll hear her in a minute as she shares with us. And as you read through the study, for those of you who are doing it with us, just by the way she talks and writes in the study, you can tell she's not just a mom that's telling you what to do or how to do it. She's a mom that is in the trenches too. She loves Jesus with all her heart. She has five boys, y'all, ages five to 24. Is that right, Jeannie? <laughs> that is right. Yes, in all <laughs> places in between. <laughs> And y'all, the one thing she said when I asked her about her parenting, she was like, I need a whole lot of grace in my parenting. And so she just really can relate to what we're going through. And Jeannie, I'm so excited to hear what you're going to be sharing with us beginning this week with the freedom from the pressure to be enough. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm so, so delighted to join you. And I am excited to talk about the pressure, the pressure to be enough and the freedom that we have from it. So let's dive in. I um, I recently had coffee with a younger mom and she confessed to me while we were sitting together that before she had kids, she assumed parenting wouldn't be all that hard. She's a pretty easygoing person. And she didn't think the pressure she saw so many other moms under would bother her. But then she had children. <laughs> she had <laughs> and one, and then she had another one, and then she had another one. And, and she discovered that, yes, parenting enlarges our heart, but it also exposes our weaknesses. And that is hard. And she said to me, now I mostly feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, and I often feel like I get it wrong. And I completely resonated with what she said. And I assured her that she isn't alone because in fact, I don't know a single mom who wouldn't agree because our pressure cooker culture tells us that we have to be enough for our kids or worse, that we actually can be enough for our kids. If we just try hard enough, we're told that their hearts are wholly reliant on our performance and their entire future is riding on our ability to perfectly orchestrate their lives. In other words, we're told that if we get it all right, our kids will turn out all right. And if we get it all wrong, our kids will turn out all wrong. And this pressure to be enough leaves us, well, it leaves us overwhelmed, weary, and maybe even a little hopeless. So I want us to turn to the truth that changes everything because you know who else was well acquainted with a feeling of pressure, a feeling of not enough and being overwhelmed and weary and hopeless is the Apostle Paul. He wrote the book of 2 Corinthians to the church in Corinth and uh, the people there had embraced a false gospel and they were experiencing affliction. And Paul wrote to them as someone who was also well acquainted with pressure and affliction. So while Paul was not writing directly to moms in the 21st century who are under immense pressure and experiencing affliction and trying to raise children in the truth of the gospel, I think we'll see today how his writing and encouragement apply to our daily lives as moms. His writing is in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, and he writes, we don't want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of our affliction that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength so that we even despaired of life itself. 
Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a terrible death and he will deliver us again. We have put our hope in him that he will deliver us again. So the apostle Paul understood pressure. And here what he's saying is saying, we were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure to the extent that we despaired of life itself. And maybe it sounds dramatic, but there, I will tell you, there have been plenty of days when I have felt that way. I have felt pushed far beyond my ability to endure in motherhood. No, my life was not at stake like Paul's and my circumstances were far less severe. But there have been some very hard days when the enemy has flaunted my weaknesses and my failures before me, and I have been swallowed up by despair. And I wonder today, have you ever felt the pressure? Have you ever felt the pressure you're under in your mothering is far beyond your ability to endure? But then notice what Paul reminds us of in verse nine. Paul showed us what the pressure is intended to do. In the NIV translation, he said, this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. See, friend, this is so relevant to our parenting. The pressure we are under is intended to make us run to and rely on God. And here's the thing. So much of the pressure that we experience as moms and so many of those ugly emotions that we get stuck in, it stems from us getting this equation backward. The pressure stems from believing that parenting is about God relying on us to be enough for our kids. But that's not it at all. Parenting is about us relying on God to be enough in our weakness. This passage teaches us to rely on God to be enough when we feel overwhelmed and less than and not enough. See, becoming the moms we long to be doesn't happen by trying harder and harder to be enough for our kids. It happens by relying more and more on God, who already is enough. So let's look at how Paul concluded this passage. He said, he has delivered us from such a terrible death, and he will deliver us again. We have put our hope in him that he will deliver us again. So he's essentially saying, hey, don't forget, God has shown up before. So rest assured, he will show up again for you, mom. Set your hope on him. You know, I love the definition of hope is to trust in, to wait for, to look for, to desire something or someone, or to expect something beneficial in the future. See, God wants us, our hope set on him, not on us. He's inviting us to trust in, wait for, look for, and expect him to be enough for us and for our kids. There's a lot I don't know, but this I do know. God who called you to motherhood will be faithful to see you through motherhood. So whether you're wrangling toddlers who refuse to cooperate, you're wiping the tears of a teenager caused by situations you can't fix. Maybe you're disciplining your child for the hundredth time today and wondering if there will ever come a day when they will listen and obey without a fight. You may be tempted to think God have have chosen someone better for your kids. But trust me, I get it. Those thoughts are from the enemy whose specialty is feeding us lies. He wants us to suffocate under the pressure of parenting. What we get to remember is that God did not choose us to be our child's savior. He chose us to be our child's parent. And he will, he will equip us to parent the children he has entrusted to us. Oh, my goodness, Jeannie. I can't think of a better way to have kicked off this week. And honestly, as I was listening to you, I wrote down words like, I needed to hear this. And then even I had one point I needed to push the microphone away from my face because I had tears. Um, Mm -hmm. When you said, and everybody, I want you to like listen to these words and just absorb them into your heart. The pressure we are under is intended to make us rely on God. 
And guess who's always there whenever we need him? It can be the middle of the night when we wake up because there's something on our minds that's worrying us. Or it can be in the middle of the day. It can be no matter where or what you're doing, God is there and we can rely on him and to turn to him. And then, Jeannie, the other thing when you said becoming the mom we long to be doesn't happen by trying harder and being better and doing more or to be enough for our kids, it happens by relying more on God who already is enough. Mm -hmm. That was just, um, wow. That's the part that really got me choked up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we're busy, really busy. And like, you know, my kids are mostly out of the house. My youngest is a junior in college this year. And then I have three that are older in her and I still haven't stopped being a mom. I thought I was getting to the easy part when they're out of the house. But I find that now I worry on things that I really can't control at all. That's right. And um, that relying on God has become the lifeline that um, that you talked about in here. Um, because honestly, um, you gave some things. And guys, this is what I want you to take home. God is inviting us to trust in, wait for, look for, and expect him. And so this week, I just want you to to feel invited by him to trust, to wait, to look, to expect. And you can do that as you go through um, each day of this Bible study this week. And so, um, Jeannie, thank you so much for this. Um, I think a lot of times when our kids are doing things and we feel like we haven't been enough, we do feel like it's our fault and we might want to take the blame. Um, And then sometimes when they're doing right, and maybe we want to take the credit. (laughs) Then we want the glory. (laughs) Right? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But we don't want the blame. And so we certainly can't take that glory. It is all for God to take care of. And um, that's that's why trusting him is so important. And this was a message. What a great way to kick off our study of Mom Set Free this week. So thank you so much. And hey, will you come back next week? I would love to. (laughs) Great, because you guys, next week we have, um, we'll be back again with another audio teaching and encouragement from Jeannie Cunyon that you are not going to want to miss. And so, Jeannie, thank you so much for joining us this week. And everybody, stay in God's Word because that's where you're going to find the truth. And when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything.